Hi, I'm Jay Wohler, principal here at the elementary school, and we're here this evening to take a tour of the elementary as we highlight areas of need for our upcoming referendum. And I'm Kurt Murray. My wife, Marsha, and I have lived in La Crescent since 1969. Both of our girls uh, attended La Crescent Elementary and High School. I'm retired from the La Crosse School District as supervisor of buildings and grounds. When people come to visit us here at the elementary, there is direct access to the entire building from our front entrance. Typically in newer facilities, you will see the office area adjacent to the entrance so that when a person enters the building, they need to enter directly into the um, office area. One thing that's helpful with that is we know exactly who is in the building and uh, when they come and go. One of the areas we want to visit this evening is the uh, bathroom areas and uh, some of the things that we'll notice in here. One of the first things you'll notice is the tight entry areas, which really poses some challenges for our students with accessibility needs. Being a 50s buildings, the fixtures are 1950s and, and outdated and continually run water, uh, which we wouldn't do today. Also, the ventilation is just natural draft ventilation through the wall, and uh, bathrooms today should have power ventilation. Here we are in our big gym area and it's one of the areas that we uh, see a significant need uh, for some uh, development. You probably can hear in the background the air handler unit in the ceiling running. Uh, because of the noise of that, oftentimes during gatherings that gets shut off and uh, then it gets very warm and sticky in, in here, and that's always been that way. I remember when my girls had concerts in here. Also, this is the large gym space, and compared to other elementary schools in, in today's schools, this is a tiny, large gym. One other thing to notice in here are the ceilings. Uh, we do have some concerns with the roof. There will be some needs uh, to address in our roof system. One of the other unique features to this gym is the um, vinyl flooring that we have in here. Basically, it's a vinyl tile that's placed over the floor. With that, you do get some vibrations and noises that make it really challenging for students to participate in their PE classes and hearing their PE teacher, and then also makes it very challenging, and uh, basically we can't hold uh, many of our sporting events in this facility either. Now we're visiting our upper floor, and this is our hallway area. It's a pretty narrow hallway, so when we get students moving in and out about this area, uh, it really does get congested. We do have several desks set up along the hallway areas throughout the building, and this is kind of those individual workstations where students can do some uh, additional work or get some additional help. And when you get a busy hallway going, it doesn't turn into a very conducive environment for those learning spaces. So here we are in one of our classroom settings and what you'll notice about our classrooms is that they have what I would call a 1950s layout. They kind of have the long and skinny feel to them. Within each of our classrooms there's a slightly different setup. This setup in here is set up in the groups and, and tables. Um, students often will congregate on the rug and in today's instruction there's a lot of small groups and collaborative groups with students one of the challenges with the long skinny rooms is there's really not a lot of areas for students to do some of that collaborative work other than maybe at their table. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of floor space to do some of those important uh, meeting zones for learning. One thing you will notice about the elementary school is that we are on five different levels. When you think about it from an emergency standpoint and a fire drill, uh, we need to have four adults for every student who might be in a wheelchair or some sort of an accessible uh, mobility device. And when we're talking about an emergency situation, it is very, very challenging trying to get enough people to our hot zones. And this, this is one of those areas where we want to pick up a student. We need to have four people, four adults here helping our students down the levels. So again, we have five levels here at the elementary school. Here we have an exterior door frame that's starting to rust out and I can stick my pen in there. 
this, this is more of a symptom to what happens to an old building. The door frame is corroding out because of salt. You have sewer pipes that are corroding out because of, of 60 years. You've got water pipes that are corroding. Uh, it, just in general, these are the types of things that you can't see going on in an old building, but you have the deterioration taking place in the walls and under the floors that even if you do a remodel, you're still going to have things like this going on underneath the floors and in the walls that are going to have to be dealt with on a continuing basis. One of the things we've had to do here at the elementary is get really creative with our learning spaces. And this is an area here where uh, we need to do some of that flexible learning. And um, because we don't have the space available, other than those hallway areas I mentioned earlier, we needed to get creative with our learning spaces. So this is one of the areas that we use uh, as a learning space. You'll notice some of the things that we're concerned about in here are just some of the piping issues, um, the ventilation here, uh, really, really not a conducive place for effective learning. Upstairs with the corroded door frame, we talked about other plumbing issues with pipes rusting out from the inside. We have a sewer catch basin here and it's having the same corrosion issues that the door frame upstairs is having and at some point it's going to also have to be replaced along with the other piping in the building. Here we are down in the cafeteria area. One thing that you would notice during a busy school day is that when we have 170 students in this area eating lunch, the low ceilings and the tight quarters definitely make it uh, less than ideal. One other thing we do in this space is we have our kids company after school and many times we'll have over 100 students in this area as well which we really appreciate but what does get challenging is that when you're spreading these groups out throughout the, the facility um, it does make for again a loud uh, environment and makes it challenging for those students who really want to focus on getting their homework done or some of those other activities that might be a little bit more um, need for some quieter space. One of the things that we haven't talked about on our tour is the school building not being air conditioned. Certainly in today's world and many more fragile students with asthma problems and other medical issues, air conditioning becomes much more important to the student. Also with today's high education expectations, certainly a comfortable classroom is, is a classroom that would perform better. A space like this with low ceilings, uh, without air conditioning, and you get 100 children or 150 children in here, the temperature gets very, very high. One other thing I'd like to mention is the use of our space. We'd like to be able to share our space with the community, and a new facility would definitely be able to give us a partnership where those facilities can be used by all within the community. Thanks again, and uh, we work really, really hard to try and pre prepare our students for uh, becoming great citizens and uh, people in La Crescent. And uh, one of the things that uh, we would, we would uh, think, benefit from is just continuing to uh, strive to meet their needs. Thank you for taking time to be an informed voter.